Uh, we saw the note earlier in the week from uh, you and BioNTech uh, teaming up to develop this vaccine. Can you bring viewers up to speed on what you're doing? So I think actually you're thinking about another arrangement, but I think what we are doing inside Merck is we are bringing to bear all of our uh, experience and our expertise in developing vaccines. You just mentioned Ebola. Uh, we were able to get an Ebola virus vaccine across the finish line in terms of demonstrating it, it was safe and effective uh, and getting the regulatory approvals and being able to scale up. So we know what it takes to get a vaccine across the finish line in a public health emergency. Yeah, you're right. It is Pfizer. My apologies. But more broadly, though, uh, Ken, how much good wood has already been chopped in developing some of these things, given uh, the past episodes that we've been through? Well, I think that we have a lot of expertise, but let's remember that this is a novel coronavirus that we hadn't heard about until last December. So a lot of work has to be done to understand the virus. The good thing for a company like Merck is we have a lot of expertise with, for example, antivirals, HIV, Hep C, other uh, areas. We have a vast library, and we're going to continue to test those assets to see if any of them have effectiveness against this particular uh, coronavirus. But if I could just take a moment, I think while that's an important thing in the industry, all across the industry, you have many, many biomedical researchers trying to look for therapeutics as well as vaccines. I think it's important to reiterate with the unprecedented spread of this particular virus, a doubling around the world in the last two weeks, we are the first line of defense with respect to our own hygiene, washing our hands, uh, in terms of social distancing. The second line of defense are all those health care providers, doctors, nurses, and community volunteers who are helping affected people. And then the industry has really swung into action uh, with a lot of biomedical researchers dropping what they were doing to ensure that we actually are focusing on, the, on this issue. Uh, indeed. I saw a picture of a healthcare worker today with a sign saying, I stayed at work uh, so you can stay at home. That's really where we are. Bill, I want to bring you in, uh, given your expertise, and, and ask you what you think is important, and then have you ask Ken what you guys together think is important. Well, I, I think uh, we're working very hard to get a vaccine, but I think uh, we need to be realistic here. We're looking uh, at at least a year, could be 12, to, could be 15 to 18 months, Moderna had the first uh, uh, human trial, but uh, we don't know. Uh, that's an MNRA trial. I, 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 we just don't know how it's going to work, and healthy patients will see. And I think we have an amazing medical capacity in companies like Merck, the greatest pharmaceutical company in the world, but with their science. But I think we've got to, uh, people are working together to try to develop something. But uh, I think we have a little note of caution about get something too quickly. And uh, meanwhile, we have to defend, as Ken said, we have to depend upon our, our health care workers. My son and daughter are both doctors at UCSF. Their work is being shifted to emergency type work. They're staying at home. But they're being called in for emergency work. So things are changing rapidly. I talked to the CEO of Mayo the other night. Mayo has basically shut down except for emergency procedures. And uh, so, but we have a health care system, I think, that's going to help a lot of people for the next year to reduce the, uh, the death rate. And meanwhile, as Ken was indicating, we as citizens have to separate and go into social distancing. It is going to hurt the economy, but I think that's the, the right thing to do while we're working hard to get a vaccine. I was on the board of Novartis and we had swine flu. There were 60 million people affected. But that swine flu vaccine basically shut it down, but it took a whole year to get it. We had three million doses out. So uh, we need to be not be too overly optimistic that something's going to change and everything's going to bounce back in a couple of months. Right. Uh, I mean, we definitely want to nope. uh, keep, uh, keep viewers honest. Ken, were you going to jump in? Yeah, I was going to make another point that we haven't talked about, I, I haven't seen talked about. With, with these kinds of viral outbreaks, often the severe infections are accompanied by bacterial infections, sometimes super bacterial infections. You go back a decade yeah. to H1N1. Half of the people, nearly half of the people, the 300,000 people who lost their lives died because of bacterial pneumonia. It's important that we also continue to develop new powerful antibiotics to ensure that with respect to this particular outbreak and future outbreaks that we have those things in our arsenal.